Hey, good morning. There we go. Good morning, and thanks for listening to Winds of Praise Broadcasting. This is Scott Albright, and doggone, it's uh, 732. I'm here with my friends, and I think I just got so excited about the morning that I completely blew past our 730 start, and I'm here with Ernie Morkwin. Good morning, Ernie. Good morning, everybody. And what's exciting is I'm here with Pastor Phil Magnum. Hello, Phil. Hi there, Ernie. Uh, it's great to be here. <laughs> You we're, guys, are, we're having too much fun. I know it. I just uh, we're we're praying and we're talking truth behind the microphone, and I just realized, man, it's we usually start sharp at seven thirty. Thanks to Sandy, who's always uh, she's your mother-in-law, always listening up in the state of Washington. Yep. And good uh, morning. Good morning. Uh, let's just not fool around, Ernie. Would you open us up in prayer this morning? Oh, sure, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for this uh, wonderful day. Um, yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here. We thank you so much for today. We thank you that your spirit uh, is always on the move, seeking out those that will turn to you. Lord, we pray today for a salvation of many, many people. We thank you for Phil being here. And Lord, we dedicate this time to you. We thank you that your presence is here. And we look forward to everything that you have planned for us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. And this is Scott Albright, by the way. And Colleen is usually here. Colleen McNeil. She's usually where you're sitting, Ernie. And uh, Colleen is not here because she had her head cold as last I, last she said, and her beloved Dan. Uh, we all know Dan McNeil. In fact, when she was gone, uh, when Colleen was on her trip down to Texas and then Arizona, he came in and I think he gave you a, a fire, fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher, yeah, because yeah. my motorhome caught on fire on the way to yeah. Idaho a couple of weeks ago. Dan is such a generous soul, and uh, he's <laughs> he was taken to the hospital, and it needs help. To recover, yep. uh, he has been diagnosed with COVID, so he was on uh, receiving oxygen and in isolation and the whole thing. And so, uh, with Colleen's permission, we want to pray for them. Yeah. And uh, uh, we want to pray life and health. I can read a prayer that sent that was sent from uh, listeners. Yeah. And friends why don't you of do hers. that? Okay. That's a good one. Let me do that, and then uh, I was going to ask Phil to pray. Why don't you Why don't you pray first, Phil, and then I'll read this. Uh, Lord God of heaven and earth, we just mm. thank you so much Yes, that Dan is in your hand right That's now, right. God, that you see his condition. And Lord God, we just ask that you'd breathe new life into our brother, Lord, that you'd breathe on him, God, and heal him completely, Lord. Just say the word Amen. and Amen. he shall be healed Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Lord. And we thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Lord, we ask not only for physical health, but yes. Lord, even right now, that, that Dan would sense your presence, yes, God. Lord, he would yes. sense your, your affirmation, Lord. And yes, Lord, touch Colleen as well, Lord. Help her to be comforted during this time, Lord, and to know, God, that you are in charge and that you are the God of heaven and earth. And Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. You know, what I told you guys, um, amen, by the way, but... Uh, this is Friday, so in the Hebrew calendar of things, this would be day six of a normal week. And remember what happened on the sixth day of creation. God created man and, and woman, and he created Adam out of the dust of the earth. And what did he do? He breathed the breath of life into him. Yeah. How appropriate on this day. And so thank you, Father, for your breath of life. Thank you that I've been able to play during this last half hour or so songs about you are the air we breathe. And we just pray again that you would breathe life into Dan. Here's the prayer that was uh, sent. She said this was sent from friends in Oklahoma. Colleen sent this. Lord, we lift up Dan now and pray that you heal his body in Jesus' name. We yeah. bind the works of the enemy. and That's that. Right. No weapon formed against Dan shall prosper. We pray that you open up his breathing passages mm -hmm. and that his O2 saturation will return to normal. Yeah. We pray for deep breathing to get any stagnant air out. And when he inhales, Dan, breathes in your healing touch. We pray for Colleen also that you'll give her peace and protection in Jesus' name. Amen. You, you know, another thing I'm thinking about is is. You know, God not only created us, uh, Psalm 139 says, you created me in my mother's womb, my inward parts. And uh, it seems like we have a lot of prayer for inside healing needs. And I think of that. He, he knows our inward parts. And he says he, he will put his word in our inward parts and write his word upon our heart. 
Wow. So he, he knows intimately our inward parts, our lungs, our, our pancreas, our liver, everything. He knows. God Amen. knows. Amen. And he knows that we need to breathe. And so we just speak that truth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Love it. Amen. Uh, Pastor Phil, I love playing your sermons on uh, Tuesday mornings at 1030. Joe Welsh is faithful to drop those CDs by through our door. I've got a stack of them over there that uh, I prepare. And, and I think we're still in Revelation. You, it's probably a, a series a long time ago. But I really appreciate you doing that. And you are a good supporter. And, and you are a hands-on pastor. You know, you, it's like whenever I call you, you're doing something. <laughs> and, and I first got introduced to you, I believe you were a speaker at a, uh, a life conference in South Beach. You were talking about uh, the pro-life, pro-choice situation. And of course, we are promoting pro-life. I remember last year, and this is one of the things you want to talk about, the right to life chain or you just talk chain. about it. You talk about what what's coming up. Today's now October first. Yeah. Wow, already. Yeah. This is this is Friday. We got Saturday and then Sunday. Go sure. ahead and talk about this. So uh, we're going to be having a life chain uh, this coming Sunday uh, at one thirty, uh, uh, both at the in front of City Hall in Newport and also at the intersection, uh, the D River intersection in Lincoln City at one thirty. And uh, I'll give you some telephone numbers uh, as part of this interview. But I just wanted to let you know that that uh, Life Chain actually started back in 1987, and based it, it's it has grown to over 2,000 uh, groups that meet across the United States and Canada, and uh, so that's been going on for like 34 years. It's pretty amazing. Um, but um, on their own website, they they basically say that it is not a protest but it's rather a peaceful prayerful public witness of pro-life supporters and that's a really great uh great uh i do you know that's a great picture of what it is each participant is provided a sign and they are they are signs that actually are only uh life chain approved we don't just bring in any sign that we want because we want to have a certain kind of concerted message and so Oh, some of the some of the signs will say Jesus heals and forgives, or it might say adoption, the loving option, or abortion kills children, or pray to end abortion, or Lord forgive us and our nation, and and even some of our signs are actually in Spanish because we want to reach out to the entire community uh, with this message, and uh, I am pleased to say that babies' lives have literally definitely been saved because of the witness this prayerful legal witness on the streets you know we're standing maybe 20 feet from each other and we're praying for that time and uh, babies lives have been saved because women who've already been slated for abortion the following day see the signs and it reminds them of the value of the life of their own child and yeah. And, and I can't stress how important it is for churches, every single church, to be committed to help women who are in crisis, to be that spiritual, emotional support for them, to challenge yeah. uh, the dads, uh, to, be, uh, to be providers and protectors instead of uh, being absent, instead of uh, abandoning their girlfriends or their wives in their moment of need. Um, it, it is no, there is no question how much Jesus values children. That's right. Uh, the fact that children are even conceived at all is God's vote for life. It is God's desire that we would have uh, children in our families and to love them and to raise them up in the Lord. And, and it's so tragic that 10,000 children every year in, in Oregon uh, lose their lives by abortion. And that's not even including uh, the use of abortifacient drugs uh, like RU486, which ends a child's life at an early term. Um, and so you can, you can, it's just a sad fact that every hour of every day in Oregon, every hour a child loses their life. A child that won't be able to see the sunshine, they won't know what it means to smile, they won't know what it means to enjoy uh, the love of their parents and, and the world around them and 
And I get it. I totally get it. People will say, well, there's too many people in the world or there's, you know, that child will probably live a life of suffering and difficulty. I got news for you. It, it has everything to do with what we do with children. It has nothing to do with the child. It, the child Amen. should not be, the child should not be uh, attacked or killed or thrown away because we're unwilling to provide a life for them in this world that's loving and, and caring. And um, it's, it's about the way we view children. It's not the problem isn't the child, the problem is us. And we need to repent. We need to turn away from a culture of death and turn to a culture of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. That's uh, Pastor Phil Magnan uh, this morning. You're listening to Winds of Praise Broadcasting. And uh, again, the life chain happening on Sunday, it is a, not a time of screaming protest. I've, I've been at a number of them, and it's actually a pretty uh, holy moment. And I, I believe it was just last year, Phil, that uh, you were here in Newport, and, and you had your hat on, and we all had masks on. <laughs> and I remember looking at you as you, I think, opened the event in prayer on the city steps, the, the city hall, and I'm thinking, that guy looks like Phil Magnum. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but no, he's up in Lincoln City, so I didn't say anything to you. And we ended up standing, uh, you know, 60 feet away from each other. And we just still didn't even know until you sent yeah. me a picture and you said, was this you? I go, yeah, that yeah. was me. <laughs> yeah, last, last year we decided to have uh, the life chain uh, the folks even from Lincoln City came down here to uh, Newport. We joined together and it was a great time. There was a great showing of, uh, of support and uh, it was such a good time uh, together. And you know, we had opportunity just to be able, e- even just to, just to worship God, to be able to talk to people, to be able to, it was just such a good vibe. Um, and, and I agree with you, Scott. No, you know, none of our people are yelling no. or anything. We're, we are very much admonished. All of us are admonished to be very gracious with and people. Yeah. And even when people are, even when people are yelling at us or uh-huh. flipping us off or whatever, mm-hmm. that we're just, you know, God bless you. And we just, we just yeah, focus right. on the children. We focus on women who are, who are going to be facing yeah. this. I mean, there's like 40% of the women that get abortions. Are, we're actually pressured by their boyfriend or even right, their grandparents, right. or they're they're in a really untenable situation, and so we we really want to uh, be a voice for them even on the streets. And, and we know it's a very delicate issue. Um, as a matter of fact, we're putting together the Winds of Praise post. It should go to the printer today, but uh, recommended by you, uh, the writer is Susan Swanson. I don't know if that's her last name. I don't have it in front of me. But she's from Walport, and she's writing on this perspective. She's experienced the the pain of going through this yes. type of a thing. Yes. So, uh, look for that in the new Winds of Praise post, yeah, and right. it'll be online. I, you know, I'm glad you brought that up, Scott, because there are a lot of women in our county that are that are wounded yes. by right. the abortion right. procedure and by that going through that whole thing. And right. on the average, most women will not realize what they've done until like five years later, and it hits them like right. a ton of bricks. Well, um, I remember uh, years ago, uh, I was in uh, the Netherlands, and we actually went to The Hague, and we handed out a thousand affidavits to each of the departments of their government, of the Netherlands government. Uh, we handed out a thousand affidavits of women swearing that they had been harmed in some manner because of abortion, because of the abortion procedure. Mm-hmm. And it was very powerful, and we even were able to deliver that little packet of a thousand pages to the king and queen. Oh my. So it's really, really important that our government understand that this isn't just a political issue. It's a no. moral issue. It's a sport, spiritual issue. Right, right. It's an emotional issue, and we totally get that. And we're not yeah. here to throw stones at women. No, no. no we're not, not at here all. to do. We're just here to say, can we just stop and take a breath? And can we not give? Yeah. You know, can we not say, hey, we there's a better alternative to abortion. Right. We can do better than abortion. Well, I was uh, a few weeks ago when we were up in Idaho. Uh, Dr. Welch and I went on that discussion and um and he made me realize that you know we're, we're so um deceived into thinking that oh it's just nothing it's just a little it's just a little egg or it's just this it, it's not really a human right. well you know what it, dr Wells says well you know what does the bible say that god has before he even all of this came into existence he thought about our life he thought about every single one of us he saw our entire life 
before his eyes, before he even created the earth. And every single one of these little babies is not a nothing in God's sight. Every single one of these little babies um, has a full life, whatever their life is already played out in God's mind. And and that child is being, Mm -hmm. like Phil was just praying earlier and saying earlier that that child is being... uh, it's a child that has a full life ahead of it. Well, it's yeah. not a nothing. It's not just a little blob mm-hmm. or a. Well, yeah. what do we what do we say when a child is struck by a car, at four years of age? They had so much more life to live. Yeah. They had such potential. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. It's no different than good, the child good in the point. womb. That's very right. And that each child should not be discriminated based upon their their size or their level of development. Or right. the environment in which they live, which is the womb, or even the degree of dependency. They don't deserve to be because murdered. Because we're... Killed. We, we, no child. No child. I mean, the challenge is for the adults. Yeah. Right. You know, the right. challenge is for us to look at children differently and not see them as a nuisance. I happen to have um, 16 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. Ooh. I love kids. Kids are a hoot. I mean, they're just, they're amazing. Yes, they are a lot of work, lots and lots of work. But you know what? You raise them up in the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Let the adventure begin. Oh, and, boy. The and great so adventure. It's a joy. It's a joy. <laughs> well, and, again, Life Chain uh, coming up Sunday, uh, 1.30. That's just two days beautiful. away. And I'd, I'd like you to pray, Phil. Okay. I know you're not done talking, but uh, okay. uh, let's pray about it. Yeah. Okay. Father, we're... We're broken, God, mm-hmm. over our own complacency, Lord, and our hardness of heart, Lord. Please, Lord, soften us up. Help us, Lord, to reach out to those who are in need, Lord, women who are in crisis, men who are in crisis, Lord. Father, I remember a, a man uh, weeping over the abortion that he forced his girlfriend into. Lord, I just know that there are so many men out there that need to step up yeah. and be a different kind of men the kind of man that wants to protect and provide. But Lord, we just ask that you touch every heart, every heart in Lincoln County, Lord. You touch every heart, Lord, to just totally have an attitude of children that they're they're not a choice, they're a child. That they're a child that needs to be loved and, and, and blessed and respected and honored and raised up and God, please change this culture, Lord. Change it for a culture of life. To value every human being. Lord. That's right. Lord, challenge us. Challenge our hearts to think differently, God. We, we're so entrenched, God, in a culture that thinks that it's just a clump of cells, God. Just have mercy, God. Open our eyes to see how you see us, God. That we're not just a clump of cells. We're made in the image, your image, Father. We're made in your image, Lord God. Have mm-hmm. mercy. Yes. Have mercy on our land, Lord. Change the Thank hearts you. of Yes, of politicians, change the hearts of schools, change the hearts of families, God. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Yes. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Thank you. Amen. Whew. Amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor Phil. Uh, Magnum, you want to keep, there was two things you wanted to talk about. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to, one thing I wanted to definitely give out is the telephone numbers of okay. those who are coordinating uh, both Newport and um, and Lincoln City. And so for Newport, um, Susan Morrison, you can reach her at 541-351-1989. Once again, uh, Su- Susan Morrison, she's, she's coordinating uh, folks in, here in Newport to be in front of the City Hall there at 1.30 this Sunday. Um, her telephone number is 541-351-1989. And then for those of you who are interested in, in uh, joining us in Lincoln City, Rosemarie Lede, she can be reached at 360-281-3566. That number again is 360-281-3566. And I uh, just want to just say, hey, guys, if you've never been to a life chain, it will change your own life. It's publicly standing up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Yeah, that's great. I got okay. two more grandbabies on the way. My middle daughter oh, is going to have her first little girl coming up here in, in sometime, probably another couple of weeks. And then my son, there, they got number two on the way. So by the end of the year, I'll have five grandkids. Wow. Yeah. What I, fun. I'm life. so excited. I like to say lots of moving pieces. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yep. I, wish, I wish we were a little closer. They're all down in California, but that's all right. All right, yeah. We are, you know, um, Scott, I, I'm so glad that you're allowing uh, this kind of message even to be on the radio because it's, it's I know it, I understand it's controversial. And I'm, and I know for a fact that, that people have strong feelings on both sides. Um, I think sometimes we have to step back and really think about okay what is our identity as human beings that we're made in the image of God yes and that's what gives us value that's that's the big deal I mean if you look in Genesis 9 6 it says whoever sheds man's blood shall by man his blood be shed for in the image of God did he create him and right. so the idea is is that the reason why God puts value on human life is because they're actually we're very different we're a different kind of creation we're actually made in the image of God and so it, it that that actually reflects in the way we treat others and so we love our neighbor as ourself we do unto others we have done unto us my own my own faith in Christ is informed by that that view that we're all made in God's image so I meet someone that I completely disagree with I meet someone who hates my guts I meet someone who has done me wrong and I still have to love them right. I still have to want to do good to them I still want to see their lives changed by Christ yes. um, God has not called us to be occupied with people's failures he's called us to be occupied with the message that will change their life Hmm. And so it's so important, so important that we understand that in this abortion debate, that we give people a chance, people that are strongly pro-choice, we allow them to explain why they believe what they believe. But I think it's important for us to ask them some probing questions. You know, did you ever think that there might be a slippery slope that's connected with this? That if we get rid of those in our lives that are inconvenient or expensive or seem to be in our in the way of our own personal plans if we get if that's the reason why we get rid of people is there something is there is that right is that really the right way because what does that mean that means we end up getting you know i mean that's that's making an argument for genocide and that's what yep. we have on our hands right now well, then we talk about old people and then the, the homeless and yeah before people. you know it you get rid of anybody that you really don't like people that you don't agree with on the political spectrum right. or and, and, and God has called us to love lavishly. Yes. To love people with care and with respect. And I thank God people um, have, have an opportunity to come to Christ. I thank God that there's, there's opportunities in this life for people's hearts to be changed. And, but they're not going to be changed unless we actually begin to have a, a, a respectful dialogue between one group and the other group sure. or another group. And, Every group needs to have this dialogue to understand why people, you know, and there are some people, they're going to tell me, look, Phil, you know, I, I can appreciate your pro-life and everything, but, but you know, my sister was raped, and you think that my sister should be forced to keep that baby? And I said, oh, wow, you know, I am so sorry. That is a horrible, horrible thing to happen to any person. It's a violation. That is a, a horrible, horrible thing. But the one thing God has taught us in his word, one of the things he's taught us is that we are not to account the sins of the father to the child. And so we, we still should not punish the child in the womb for the sins of the father. Mm, and beautiful. I will tell you that surveys have shown that women who actually have chosen to actually either keep their child that was born out of, out of a rape or or they adopt them, uh, keep them, um, that they do much better with the trauma of that rape. They much do much better. Why? Because they're taking charge of the situation and they're actually turning it into a blessing instead of a curse. And, um, and the fact is, is, that, is that we as a, as a society have to understand that there are two bodies that are involved when a woman is pregnant. There are always two bodies involved. And that other body has their own DNA, they have their own blood type, they have their own brain waves, they have their own uh, set of organs. Uh, while the child may be smiling in the womb, uh, the mother may be frowning outside. So there are two different individuals that are involved in, in the womb, you know, between the womb and the person outside of it. And so, and I understand, you know, people say, well, it's just a, it's just a thing. It's just a. It's not an extra organ. I'm sorry. Right. You know. I'm sorry. I'm not my mom's kidney. You know. 
<laughs> I am not one of my mom's organs. She actually gave birth to me. Of course, I actually, I was a twin, so I actually was a, um, I, had, I had a twin brother who was born with me as well, and uh, we were womb mates. Uh, we were wombies. <laughs> we uh, shared a womb without I've never a view. Heard that. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. That's I tried good. to do finger puppets, but it didn't work yeah, because right, it was right. so dark. But, but the fact is, is that they're funny. individuals, and they actually feel pain much earlier than we ever realize. So, uh, children are—it's a excruciating uh, experience for a child in the womb to experience being uh, vacuumed out of their mother's womb. It oh. is a horrible, horrible thing. And we need to face it. We need to face it. I know that's horrible, but we need to face it, that's people. Right. That's because right. we need to love our neighbor in the womb as well. We need to confer and, and agree with God that they are made in God's image, and we need to protect them and provide for them. Amen. Amen. All right. That's uh, Pastor Phil Megan. Mm, good stuff. And uh, we like to keep this a half hour. I know we could go for hours uh, talking uh, without a doubt. Not us, no. Yeah, I'm going to post this on YouTube, but I'm thinking that maybe I will replay this half hour maybe before 9 o'clock, which means I'd have to do it like at 8.30 or something. But uh, Pastor Phil, you pastor the Calvary Chapel in Lincoln City. Where are you located? Should someone want to fellowship with you? Uh, Calvary Chapel, Lincoln City is located at 4406 Southeast Highway 101 in Lincoln City. We're at the south end of, of Lincoln City, and we'd love to see you at 1030 on Sundays. And we have a wide variety of ministries going on. You're like right yes. at the end of the double lane yeah, as you're going north. Yeah, so it's you a gotta, cool little church. You've got to be looking for it. And yeah. by the way, if you're coming out of the parking lot, I did this once. I forgot that it was not a double lane anymore. I went to turn right thinking that I had two lanes to go in, and I was like, oh, I'm never going to do that again. So it quickly becomes <clears> one lane. <laughs> uh, Ernie, you are pastoring in Agate Beach. Uh, you preached last Sunday. Yep. And uh, who's up this time? Uh, I think Joe's teaching again this Sunday. And yeah, you tell us about us. your church and location. Mm -hmm. Just Aquinnah Chapel right there by Zabos. The Share Don's the little... Our little tiny little church right in there. Okay. That's great. We're teaching through Isaiah. We'll be in chapter 45 right. this week. And uh, I'm in Solettes. As a matter of fact, tomorrow morning on Saturday morning, I uh, have started a, a scripture reading session at 7 a.m. And then we follow it with breakfast. Oh, that's right. At You're doing eight. that. Yeah. yeah. And so we're going to we're starting the new cycle of the Torah reading, and it's all about Bereshit. I was in the pulpit last Sunday and talked about the beginning in the beginning. And coming up on Winds of Praise at 10.30 will be Pastor uh, Luke from uh, a sister church, right, uh, in South Beach. And I've had a hard time getting the sermons, but we did it. Uh, thank you to Esai and to, to Bo for sending me those sermons that we can, we can do. And so that's at 10.30. And also, by the way, I want to say thank you to Matt Harner, uh, who owns the Ultra Life Cafe. And uh, he says, we want to support you guys. We want to underwrite you guys. And my idea was maybe he could, you know, be the sponsor of the 8 o'clock hour. And he, he was, wasn't, wasn't concerned about all the details. But Ultra Life, there's a little coffee shop next to us. There's one in Nye Beach. Uh, Toledo was shut down because of all the stuff that was going on, but they're going to reopen. And Matt's working on a, a new location in South Beach. Well, nice. praise the Lord. So nice. Thank you, Matt. And if you want to underwrite, uh, we do need help that way. Uh, we publish the Winds of Praise post every month. It's not cheap. Uh, we got to pay the bills for that, but nobody here in ministry gets paid. <laughs> you know, that's just... We love the Lord, man. Yeah, God has given us freely. He, he's yep. given us life freely, and so we want to give life freely. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, Amen. Yeah. Oh, good stuff, man. Thank, thank you, guys. It's great to be here, Scott. All right. It's uh, good Pastor, to see you, Phil. It's been a while. Pastor great to Phil, see you too, Why don't Ernie? you close us with prayer? Uh, yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you that... Lord, you're able to work even in the midst of the mess. Yeah. And Lord, help us to yield to your grace today. Help Thank us you. to yield to your Holy Spirit. Lord, give us wisdom and discernment in these last days. Mm -hmm. Help us to finish strong. Lord, help us to pursue love and holiness. Yes. While there's yet body, uh, breath in our bodies, God, have mercy, God. And Lord, we do ask once again a special blessing on Colleen and Dan Lord, yes, today. Thank you, Lord. Just bless God. Overwhelm. Mm -hmm. In fact, bless the, the medical staff there. Bless the yes. hospital. Just pour out your spirit, God, on all of them. And we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your faithful servant, Scott. Lord, he's yes. such a blessing. Thank Continue you. to expand his coasts and horizons. In Jesus' thank name, you. amen. Oh, boy. Good hey, stuff. Thank you.
Uh, by the way, uh, our little worship team uh, in Siletz is heading up to Longview, Washington. So we'll be leaving tomorrow in the afternoon mm -hmm. and we're going to help with a worship service uh, in Longview with Jerry Chapman's, the place where he attends church. And oh, worship. praise the Lord. And the ministry is a focus to the Native American. And uh, in Siletz, of course, we, we're there. We, we, we love every person, every single person, and lots of culture that God has created. Yeah. And so we'll be doing that. So. Wow. Good stuff. We're Wonderful. all part of. We're all part of the program, man. I love being yeah. part of God's program. Isn't it neat? Yeah. Amen. It's, it's just neat we, that He blessing, uses us. It's just amazing. Are just they overrun you. I know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all right. So, uh, Ernie, I love to have you give us the tagline to get out of here, and uh, so you're listening to Winds of Praise, KWPB, LP Newport, and what do you say? Go out there and give them heaven, everybody. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen and amen. Thanks for listening. I used to have a shirt that said that, give him, give him heaven.